Okay, everybody, I told you I'll see you after the game. So here we are with the Peach Bowl 2016 Alabama versus Washington postgame thoughts. And so I'm going to jump right into it because this video is going to be long. I already know it. And I don't want to take 45 minutes to an hour making this video. So first off, I'll start with the themes. So as I predicted in the videos before, I was saying that Washington, uh, Jake Browning in the offense, they were going to have trouble throwing the ball, especially down the field because Jake's been struggling in general. And in this game, Washington didn't even attempt to go down the field. They maybe did once or twice. Um, and they stuck to completing short passes. It was at one point in the game, I believe, they showed the stats. Jake Browning had thrown 19 passes, but he only had 80, 80 yards or something like that. And you know that they were just throwing these short screen routes, um, <coughs> stick routes, wide receiver screens curl routes or whatever they can to get the ball out of Jake Brown's hand because they were scared of the pass rush, understandably so. And they also didn't just, they didn't want to test out down the field, which would, I think, would lead to my assumption that Jake Browning's arm was not ready to go in just from the fact that he's been inconsistent throwing the ball down the field since that USC game. <clears throat> it all came to play. Also, the Alabama defensive line completely dominated, um, of course. Now, I did notice that the Washington offensive line they did prove that they're in those those uh, analysis of the USC and Colorado game in which they were holding up on the offensive line really well at times. They did prove that there wasn't a fluke, that they can athletically pass block really well. And at times that showed up tonight because there were times where he had all day to throw. Now Lynch knows, but the secondary still played good. But the Alabama defensive line, for the most part, dominated the line scrimmage, especially in the run game. Washington was not able to run the ball. They really tried to stay balanced but they just weren't able to get any offensive consistency going with moving the ball on the front ground. And they knew they couldn't get any chunk plays because we played so well. They couldn't get up out of our single, the two safety high looks off. We had them contained. John Ross, oh man, only five catches. And all of those were in the first half. And it was only for, what, sub 30 yards? No big plays from that guy. So it played out like I said. The one interesting thing, though, is that um, even though Bo Scarborough ended up having a really big day, on a lot of plays, the Washington D linemen, those big heavy guys I talked about before, they really held up on the line of scrimmage pretty well at times. And uh, they really were, they wanted to show their work tonight and they played with a lot of intensity and I respect that and they did a really good job. So good job, Washington D line. So I'm just going to get into some of the plays I saw. So starting out, Mika Fitzpatrick set the tone on the opening kickoff. Like uh, John Ross brought it out of the end zone. And Mika Fitzpatrick met him right before the 20-yard line and sat him down. And I said, this is going to set the tone. And it did because the Alabama team played like that from the point on. The uh, the first UW play, uh, I was surprised because we had Marlon Humphrey off, uh, playing off on, was it John Ross at the point? I don't know. But it ended up being a four- to five-yard completion just to start off the game. And then on third down, <laughs> we, I guess we wanted to give him different looks, Humphrey pressed and the press was really successful. He pressed um, John Ross, and he was able to get there and get his hand on the ball and made them punt the ball to us. Now, on Alabama's first play, it was a play-action pass, and Jalen Hurts had all day to throw, and this has been a theme all year. So the Washington D-line, like I said, no pass rush. This proves it right at the beginning of the game. Their D-line can get no pass rush, but he underthrew the ball to O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard was wide open. All he had to do was drive the ball over the safety's head into O.J. Howard's hand, and he missed the throw. And Buda Baker almost got that interception to start the game. So it was interesting. On third down, there's a little bit of miscommunication between Alabama with Bozeman snapping the ball before Jalen Hurts was ready, and we ended up taking a loss on the run, and we had to punt the ball back. Now, at the 11-15 mark of the first quarter, Browning overthrew Pettis. And this is why I said that theme of Browning overthrowing it was going to show up again here in the Alabama game. Here it is. He overthrew Pettis high and floaty. Uh, and it could have been an interception, really. At the 11-10 mark, we lost contain on the rush. And this is one of the few times that Browning was able to take advantage of the Alabama not uh, playing man-to-man -man coverage and not, uh, you know, rushing more than just a four on the D-line. But we lost contain on the rush with the defensive lineman and Browning ran for a first down. And but we got the ball back not long after that. Uh, now, interestingly enough, is that uh, oh yeah, this is the drive where they scored the touchdown. So they they were able to get us uh, out of our comfort zone a little bit. 
with some uh, some different scheme and short routes that allowed them to move the ball at inopportune times. And they kind of got us off balance a little bit. And that was the last time this drive here where they threw the 16-yard touchdown to Dante Pettis. An excellent route by Dante Pettis, by the way. He is a really good route runner. That stop and go, he really looked like he was going to stop and do a curl route or a dig route or something like that. And Marley Humphrey, Marlon Humphrey bit on it hard, and he ran right by him. It was a good throw by Drake Browning to be a touchdown. But that was the last time they caught us off balance for the rest of the game as we scored the last 24 points, and Washington really struggled from that point on. Cam Robinson on the next drive, you know, where we ran the ball, eight out of nine plays were runs. When we answered and got our touchdown again with the Bo Scarborough run, eight out of nine plays on that following drive were runs. I don't understand why we didn't run the ball more often after that because that seemed like the recipe for success. But that um, eight out of those nine plays were runs. Cam Robinson put Qualls, number 11, the big guy who tries to set the edge, to put him on his back on this play. The run blocking was just really well on this second series. Um, Hertz did hit O.J. Howard this time on this drive on the wheel route, and they got us going. Bo Scarborough finished the drive with two runs, uh, two or three runs in that 20-yard touchdown run. We blew Washington off the line of scrimmage. That was uh, one of the times I really saw us dominate the line of scrimmage. Blew him off the line of scrimmage. And... We were able to, uh, Bo Scarborough broke tackles and really got into the end zone, and Washington defenders couldn't really handle it. So that, that set the tone also for the rest of the night. Uh, a little later on, John Ross tried to make a play on a screen route. He caught it, and he was getting a little bit up the field. John the Allen ripped it out. Uh, well, Harrison and John the Allen worked together to get it out, and we got the ball at 2 minute 25 second mark. And before that play, UW had used a lot of short throws again, you know, trying to get this off balance again. And they're trying not to uh, take too long to throw the ball. Like I said, they were they were starting to get afraid of the pass rush. They saw it was coming. We were affecting him. At the two-minute, five-second mark of the first quarter, there was a big hole on the left side of the line leading to a first down run. And this is UW here. Uh, wait, was that UW or was that us? <laughs> I'm trying to remember that. Uh... I think that was, oh, yeah, that was Alabama on this drive. So we got the ball back, and we were running. And Cam Robinson and Pitchback, I guess, they blew it open, and we had a nice run here. At the 37-second 37, 37 mark of the first quarter, we we had got the ball back after uh, getting, forcing that uh, fumble by UW. And we got in the opponent territory. This is where we made mistakes. Uh, let me see. I'm, I wrote it down here. There were at least three Bama drives killed by penalties when we got into Washington territory today. Ball stars holding intentional grounding. We had third and 10 plus at least two to three times in this game. And that was after driving into the Washington territory. And you just can't have that happen. And on this particular drive, this is an example of another case of that happening, but not for penalties or not killing ourselves with penalties, but uh, just the play calling getting a little interesting. This is where the Alabama fans were kind of getting on Kiffin a little bit. But it was third and one. Oh, it was a penalty that cost us. We were at third and one. We got a false start. But then we tried to do a play with our Darius Stewart running the ball. And I disagree with the personnel. And I say it should have been a running back in. And our Darius Stewart is a talented guy who has played running back before. It was just it seemed like a running back would have been better suited to get that play. Uh, and so the play column was a little weird there, and we had a false star, and it ruined that drive, but we did get a field goal. Um, I did notice, though, that one of the reasons why we were having a little trouble moving the ball might have been that Reuben, Reuben Foster and Rashawn Evans are getting used to playing next to each other. Uh, because, you know, Sean Deion Hamilton is the original starter at linebacker, so it was, it'll be interesting to see what they do as they get another week to work together. Now, here we are in the second quarter. Uh, I charted an example of this, but no space to run for Washington at the 14 minute and 52 second mark of the second quarter. Washington tried to run the ball. They had nowhere to go. Um, 14 minute, 20 second mark. Alabama read this really read a screen pass to McClatcher. They're trying to get the ball to McClatcher. We read the screen pass really well, and we stopped the play before he had anywhere to go. And then on the, oh yeah, and Tony Brown beat the block to get that play. Tony Brown really just blew by the guy trying to block him and slammed McClatcher on the ground. And then on the very next play at the 13 minute 40 second mark, there was a screen pass that was going to the running back. And that was read extremely well by Jonathan Allen as he was there with the running back as soon as he touched the ball. So Alabama saw these short passes coming and Washington really had no answer for it. Um, Trey Williams, 
uh, Trey Adams, their left tackle for Washington, he actually did really well on Tim Williams on that play. I was surprised. I saw this just kind of like a, in a closing thought as they were moving on to the next play, but uh, Tim Williams tried to come up and rush and get into Browning's face, but Trey Adams uh, slid over and really held his own against Tim Williams, so I can see why they were so high on this guy. Bo Scarborough, uh, oh yeah, there was, there was just some times in this game where he looked untackleable, and that's why we were like, give this man the ball more often, but at the 12 minute, 22 second mark of the second quarter, um, he completely ran through a tackle for a first down. Like, the guy tried to do, grab him, and just nothing happened. He, he went right through it, and that's amazing. This type of speed, this size, this power that he has, it really shows what we have at the running back position. At the 12-minute mark of the second quarter, we tried to pitch the ball to Bo. I don't understand why we did that. I don't think that was the best call. Yeah, Bo Scarborough, run the ball right at him, get him tired. But, you know, they're trying to stretch him out and make sure that they don't focus on clogging up the middle, which Washington tried to do. At the 11 minute, 10 second mark of the second quarter, Hertz was scrambling around. Uh, he again, this is the first time I seen him get a little jittery. You know, he um, he this game had really had him kind of like out of his wits a little bit. But he was scrambling around to avoid uh, Vita Via, the Washington lineman number 50, um, and he should have thrown the ball away, and he ended up getting sacked, I believe. So he really has to work on that. But yeah, yeah, he was rolling around, and uh, and Vita ended up pulling him down. And he really should just throw the ball away. So Hurts has to get on that. Can't have that in his Clemson game because the Clemson defensive linemen are even faster. Uh, the rollout pass to Dieter at the 10-minute 40-second mark of the second quarter. This was a really good pass. Probably Jalen's best throw of the night in terms of hitting the receiver where he needs to be, the ball placement he needs to be where it needs to be, and everything working out for a first down. Uh, at the 10-minute 40-second mark, you got to go see that play. Uh, and and Jalen Hurts was rolling out, so he was doing this play on the run and hit the ball. Where it to be. I had a nine minute 55 second mark of the second quarter. Scarborough with another tough punishing run. Uh, he, he hit holes sometime and just went right through guys, and they had no answer for him. Just going right through tackles, and we needed more of that. The nine minute six second mark of the second quarter, Greg Gaines. Oh, this play I remember because Hurts. He didn't have any time. Ross Pierce Baker got beat so badly on his play. Greg Gaines really just blew right by him. And Hurts just had to hurry up and rush the throw. And he was throwing down the field, trying to go deep at Dieter, but had to throw it over his head because he had no time to set up for the play. Incomplete. Um, we got the ball back to Washington. And we, at the 8-minute, 10-second mark of the second quarter, uh, here is Josh Fraser with his first sack of his career. Uh, we got it on Jake Brown. We collapsed the pocket and contained Frazier, uh, and contained Browning at the same time. That's the type of defensive line play you need, especially against Deshaun Watson, which is going to come up next week, uh, or January 9th, not next week. So we got a few days for that. Uh, but, yeah, they collapsed the pocket with the rush, and they contained, which is really good. At the 7-minute, 33-second mark, this is one of those times where Jake Browning had a pretty good blocking from his O-line. He had a clean pocket, and the O-line held up really well. But this is where the Alabama secondary, people say the Alabama secondary is still a weakness. They say that you can attack the secondary. But not when I see plays like this, not when I've been seeing this all year. They're thinking about years past, maybe, um, and maybe even further than that, you know, back to 2014 and 13. But these last two years, we've been playing pretty good uh, in the secondary. Averett had fantastic sticky covers. That's what I called it because he was right on the receiver, and the receiver had nowhere to go. I barely saw the receiver. That's just how closely he was guarding him as they were heading toward the sideline. It was like a deep crossing route to the sideline, the right sideline. And Jake Browning had time to throw. He couldn't get him because the coverage was just so good. And Anthony Avery has been balling like that all year. Um, Pierce Baker beat again. Oh, wait, no, scratch that. It's at 7 minute 15 second mark of the second quarter. It was a run pass option, I believe, because I saw all the linemen running forward. And UW took advantage by sending their guys right in on the rush. It just happened that the rush came in where Pitch Baker was going forward, so it looked like he was beat very badly on the play. At the 6-minute, 10-second mark of the second quarter, Hurts had plenty of time to throw, and this is where I noticed he was getting kind of uh, fleet-footed, and he was kind of running around, and it seemed like he was a little bit more nervous than usual, even though he's usually very calm and composed, and I believe he still was composed. It's just that he, feeling the pressure now, started to get to him and how his uh, mental clock for getting the ball out started to come about. But he got jittery. At the 6 minute, 10 second mark, he was jittery from the start, and he ended up throwing the ball away when he could have been a little bit more patient and waited for his guys to get open. Uh, ooh. Oh, yeah. 
Was this the same play? Yeah, it was the same play. And he had Calvin Ridley going on a little small out route that would have been just short of the first down, but it would have set up a fourth and short, and we could have possibly gone for it and moved on down the field. But like I said, he ended up throwing his ball away. Or he could have dumped it off to O.J. Howard to see if he could make Buda Baker miss because they dropped, Washington dropped back to play zone on this play. O.J. Howard's running a little crossing route headed toward the right sideline. Dylan Hurts could have just dropped the ball off to him and see if O.J. Howard can make Buda Baker miss. They were playing zone. Ronnie Harrison at the 5-minute, 45-second mark. Um, and this is honestly the last time I saw Washington have really any type of success getting any type of um, groove going on offense until like the fourth quarter when we were playing a little bit of prevent. But even then, they didn't have success there either. But um, this was their chance to try to answer Alabama a little bit more. But it didn't work because at the 5-minute, 45-second mark, Ronnie Harrison hit John Ross as soon as he touched the ball. And that caused the incompletion. And, and John Ross, I think he got a little gimpy after this because I noticed later on the game, the commentators and the analysts didn't say much about it, but he seemed to be uh, a little gimpy, kind of like walking on his leg a little gingerly, gingerly as the game continued to progress. I think dealing with the physical defensive backs of Alabama, he got a little dinged up. At the 5 minute 35 second mark of the second quarter, Tim Williams' get off was amazing. On this play, he made Trey Adams look like he was in quicksand. <laughs> I think I wrote that. Uh, he blew by Adams, forcing Browning forward, and then tracked him down. So he rushed him out of the pocket, and then tracked him down for a tackle before he even crossed the line of scrimmage. Amazing play by Tim Williams. Shows why he could very well be a first-round pick. We'll see. At the 4-minute, 40-second mark of the second quarter, Hurts overthrew Dieter badly, uh, going down the uh, crossing route. He was all these deep crossing routes going to the right. Uh, he could have reined it in a little bit more. And it could have been an interception, really, because the, if the Washington DB had a looked up. At the 4-minute, 17-second mark, Scarborough had another run. Uh, oh, yeah, the right guard and the right tackle, uh, Corey and Kervin and John Williams, they blew open a hole on this play, and both Scarborough ran through it and got that first down. He really had some good runs in this game, and the offensive line really made it easy for him today at times. Oh, yeah, on the play where Hurts had his intentional grounding, uh, it seems he had the opportunity to hand the ball off. It looked like it was a, a, a option play, a run pass option, of course, at the start of the play. And I think if he had handed it off to Bo Scarborough, Bo Scarborough would have been able to get a few yards. Instead, he ended up having to run from the lineman and throwing the ball away, and it ended up being an intentional grounding. So he has to work on his decision making a little bit more. At the one minute 42 second mark of the, 30, of the second quarter, we had the screen cover. So this screen pass, we had three guys over there. Washington blocked us a little bit. But we had three guys over there in that spot, <laughs> and we were going to tackle him, but Ross is so slippery that he managed to get through it a little bit. Uh, but we tackled him, but that's the play where we saw Ruben Foster, Dalvin Thompson, and me, Fitzpatrick all get hurt, and I got a little scared there because these are the guys that are very vital to the defense, and if they go out, we'll be in trouble. But luckily, all three of them came back, so that's good news. Marlon Humphrey at the 1 minute 25 second mark, he played perfect coverage on the small out route or curl or whatever it was on the right sideline when UW was trying to throw the ball over there. And he had the interception. The ball hit him right in the hands. He put up his hands because the ball kind of surprised him with how fast he got there. And then the ball just kind of fell down. But that would have been uh, probably a touchdown, maybe, if he had been able to outrun it instead of running back in the flat. Uh, so that was an interesting play. Uh... Where am I? Oh, at the 1 minute 17 second mark of the second quarter, Reuben Foster uh, was sent on a blitz, but Jeremy Pruitt made a great call on this play. Sent Reuben Foster on a blitz, and it led to the Ryan Anderson interception because when Reuben Foster came on a blitz, Jake Brown, he just wanted to get rid of the ball really fast, and he said, I got to run it back in the flat, and he threw it out in the flat, not knowing that Ryan Anderson, instead of rushing off the edge, with which, which is what it looked like it was going to be before he snapped the ball, Ryan Anderson dropped back to cover the running back in the flat, Ryan Anderson jumped and caught the ball in front of the running back, pushed him down simultaneously, and ran in for the touchdown. That was an amazing play. And he really showed me how just how fast he really is for a really big guy playing that defensive end slash outside linebacker position. Tim Williams at the 26-second mark uh, before we, uh, the half ended, he beat Adams, Trey Adams, again. So Tim Williams really worked on Trey Adams a lot in this game. I didn't expect to see that with the inside move. And he got Browning contained with that. Uh, and we were able to make sure Browning didn't get the ball down the field. At the zero minute, I mean, well, zero minute, of course, at the 17-second mark of the second quarter, Browning uh, 
he looked shaken up. The pass rush had really started to get to him. And I can tell because when he threw the ball to the receiver, it was a short route, which he should have been able to actually throw. The ball ended up being slightly behind the receiver, and the receiver was only able to get just a hand on it as it flew behind him. Now we're into the third quarter. Uh, Hertz had a long run to start the third quarter, and this is one of those drives where we got into the opponent territory, and the penalties start to kill us, and we have to stall, and we have to punt the ball back to Washington. But he had a long run to start the third quarter, and this is one of the reasons why, and I was surprised that we didn't take advantage of this more often as the game went along. But you know how I told you guys before that Washington likes to use those big defensive tackles in the middle, and then stand up these huge defensive ends on the outside to contain? I don't know why they thought that worked, because they usually use Joe Mathis to do so. But they had Qualls on the right side of the defense line, and Jalen Hurts ran the ball toward his direction. Qualls was not square. He wasn't low. He wasn't ready to stop him. And Jalen Hurts ran right around him and ran down the field for a pretty long game. And I thought we were going to take advantage of that more often, but we really didn't get the chance to. But that was really interesting, so maybe look forward to seeing that more. Uh, Washington will probably adjust their defense now after seeing what Jalen Hurts did to them on that play. Uh, oh, beautiful throw. On the run. Oh, there's another time he did this? Oh, yeah, Jalen. Jalen Hurts obviously can throw on the run to Gary Dieter because uh, he has another throw here. Beautiful throw on the run by uh, Hurts to Dieter at the 13 minute, 35 second mark of the third quarter. Uh, in stride, actually. Uh, he threw it to Dieter, and Dieter was able to catch it and keep going. Uh, he didn't go for long, but he did catch it and keep going. So it was really good. Good throw by Jalen. He needs to keep it up. But unfortunately, penalties once again killed this drive, set us up in the third and 10 plus <laughs> yard drive, just like that drive in the first half. It stalled and we had to punt the ball back. Now, at the 12 minute, 10 second mark, when Washington got the ball back, our D line set the line of scrimmage and they tried to run. And it was absolutely dominated by what Alabama did during that play. Uh, at the 10 minute, 40 second mark of the third quarter, Tim Williams easily beats him. Now they got him working on the right tackle, McCreary. Easily beat McCrary, who was number 58 with a speed rush, and he left him behind, and that forced a three and out. We forced a lot of three and outs in this game. Um, now, at the 10-minute mark when Alabama got the ball back, good vision by Jalen Hurts. When he, he I got the ball and on the run for the QB, oh, he was a, a pass, actually, but he realized that he didn't have anybody down the field, stepped inside the rush. Then he started to run to the sideline, and he had the vision of a running back here, so instead of going to the sideline, he cut back inside and cut up the field. Good vision by Jalen Hurts. So good play. Go look at that play at the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. At the 8-minute, 47-second mark of the third quarter, Hurts had OJ. Um, he had OJ wide open, but he threw it low. And, uh, and, and OJ got his hands on it, so he should have caught it. When the receiver gets their hands on the ball, they got to catch it. But if Hurts hadn't thrown it low, it would have been an easier catch. You got to hit your tight end in the chest to make that throw. If he had to throw it up high, he would have caught it. But OJ should have caught it, though. At the 8-minute mark, and that play ended up stalling the drive. We had to punt back again, I think, uh, a little bit after this because we didn't get the first down too much longer. At the 8-minute mark, Hurts fumbled. I remember a lot of you saw this play. He was running. He tried to spin out of the, uh, the tackle, and the guy raked the hand on the ball. And I thought we were going to lose it, but our guys fell on it. Um, and once again, he was taking advantage of that slow defensive tackle contain because UW tried to use it again, and it didn't work out. Like I said, we didn't use it that often, but we should have used it more. It would have worked out in terms of getting us more success on offense. Number 21 of the UW, uh, oh, no, number 28 of UW uh, on our defense, he smacked Jonah Williams in the face. A lot of Washington fans said we don't see why Alabama players are mad about them playing dirty, but I saw a few players where Washington players were pretty chippy, and they were getting in our guy's face, and Alabama players could have responded a little bit better, but still, yeah, there was some blame to be passed around there. That was one of those examples. He smacked Jonah Williams in the face. So I saw that play. Uh, and it was no penalty, but Alabama got a penalty for a delay of game, even though that guy didn't get a penalty for what he did to Jonah Williams. That was the seven-minute, 15-second mark of the third quarter. If you want to see what I'm talking about, go watch it. Seven minute, 15 second mark of the third quarter. At the five minute, 27 second mark of the third quarter, the Alabama secondary covered really, really well here because Browning had some good time to throw, but he had to throw it away. And like I said, that's another example of the secondary playing really good and people not giving it credit. At the two minute, 37, 30 second mark of the third quarter, Browning had all day again. Like I said, they they played off, their offensive line got good blocks at times tonight. Yet, 
the Alabama secondary had everybody covered up again. So this back-to-back -back notes I just gave you there. Two minute thirty-seven, two minute thirty-second mark, the five minute twenty-seven second mark of the third quarter. Um, at the one minute forty-five second mark, we had Tony Brown playing way too soft, or maybe he just decided to play soft on this play, and we gave up the first down there. Now to start the fourth quarter, so we need to fix that. Tony Brown should probably uh, know not to give up first downs on third and long. That was a third and long play. At the start of the fourth quarter, Jake Brown again here with another example of trying to throw a little bit further out. Uh, actually, it was only about five or six yards or so, but he missed his receiver, throwing it too far to the outside on third and three, and he was probably trying to keep the ball away from the Alabama defender. So that was smart, but he still missed the receiver pretty far out. Um, that was the first play of the fourth quarter. Uh, and at times um, in this game when Alabama got the ball back, the Washington defensive line controlled our offensive line at times. There are times where the Washington defensive line seemed like their size and strength from guys like Via and Gaines, they really held up some of our guys on the offensive line. And I was surprised, and they played really well, so I got to give them some credit, like I said at the beginning of the video. At the 14-minute, 10-second mark of the fourth quarter, Hurts should have given it to Scarborough, but he kept it instead. And he did this a couple more times after this one. I'm thinking, Jalen, stop hanging on to the ball. Let uh, Bo do his job. At the 12 minute, 10 second mark, here it is. I'm telling Jalen this, give the ball to Scarborough, stop trying to keep it. Because both times he only got like a yard or two where both Scarborough would have gotten maybe two, three, or four yards instead. Next play, it's funny, next play. This is the drive where we um, we went 98 yards. The next play, Bo Scarborough broke 69 yards for a touchdown. That play was amazing because he broke through just about everybody on the defense. That run, I don't know if many of you remember this. Tell me if you do, leave it in the comments. But the Trent Richardson run from 2009, the 52-yard touchdown run he had against Arkansas, where they hit him low on his legs like three or four times, he broke all the tackles and just burst down the line of scrimmage for his touchdown. And Bo Scarborough's run here against Washington reminded me of that play because they hit him low, he bounced off, they hit him low again, bounced off, ran down the field, cut back and ran across the field for a touchdown. Great play by Bo Scarborough. A lot of people will now know his name, even though he was getting a lot of hype in the preseason. Uh, a lot more people will know about him now after that play. The sports panel is probably going to play it forever. At the 11 minute, 45 second mark of the fourth quarter, Browning's throw was floaty. So once again, Browning's throw is floating a little bit. Um, at the 9 minute, 15 second mark of the fourth quarter, Jonathan Allen and Tim Williams collapsed the pocket together. And they did a really great job of doing that. They've met at the quarterback a few times like that this year, so it wasn't any surprise. Um, Jonathan Allen shed the left guard so easily on that play. And, and yeah, and it just happened. The 8 minute 30 second mark of the fourth quarter, Browning threw way too far. So he was trying to go down the field and take a shot. Like I said, this is one of the few times that they actually tried to do it the whole night. And I see why they didn't do it a lot, because he wasn't successful throwing the ball down the field. As I said in, my, in the prediction video. He threw it way too far. And Minka Fitzpatrick played it perfectly, staying on top of the play. Like I said, we were playing a too high safety, and they couldn't get us out of that too high safety. We were going to cover the receivers up pretty well, and we did. Um, all day to throw when Alabama got the ball back. All day to throw for Jalen Hurts at the 7-minute, 25-second mark of the fourth quarter. And yet he threw it slightly behind our Darius Stewart. Our Darius Stewart would have caught the ball and would have possibly kept going. Maybe not a touchdown or anything, but... Still would have caught the ball and had time, but he threw his life behind our Darius Stewart. At the seven minute, five second, and that led to another um, get the ball back to Washington. Pressure, we pressured Browning well at the seven minute, five second mark of the fourth quarter. Uh, Anderson pushed the right tackle. Ryan Anderson just pushed the right tackle, McCrary, into the backfield. And the Bama DBs, and they just covered Ross up again. There was just another play where Ross wasn't open, and we had him covered up all night. At the 5 minute 20 second mark, we got really creative when we sent the cornerback blitz. We sent Anthony Averitt, one of the fastest guys on the team on a blitz, made it look easy and got a sack. The 1 minute 45 second mark of the fourth quarter, Browning had plenty of time, yet had no one to throw to. And it was great coverage by Alabama. Again, like I said, it's another example of their offensive line holding up at times. But our secondary played really, really good and covered everybody up. Go look at that play. And Browning's floaty arm made another appearance. He threw the ball and it was kind of floaty and it didn't really get to where it needed to be. At the 1 minute 30 second mark of the fourth quarter, pressure caused Browning to throw the ball way under us. So he underthrew Ross a whole bunch because of the pressure that we put on him. But even if he had thrown it on target, we still had two guys there covering him up. So the secondary played extremely well. No blown coverages or anything. 
one minute, 25 second mark. Tony Brown, I guess he learned his lesson from earlier, played some really, really tight coverage. Even at the end of the game, you know, we were trying to preserve our shutout, and Tony Brown really played really well there. The one minute, 20 second mark of the fourth quarter, Rashawn Evans came off the edge so fast. This was the last sack of the game, and he really, really, really made Trey Adams look like he was in quicksand, like he had feet and concrete. That's just how fast Rashawn Evans came off that line of scrimmage and got to Jake Browning. You had to go look at that play the one minute, 20 second mark of the fourth quarter. And um, finally, with uh, Jake Browning just throwing the ball up at the end of the game, Minka Fitzpatrick got the interception in the end zone and tried to take it back for the touchdown, which he had because that would have made my spread look, uh, look very much so like what I would have predicted, almost 20 point spread, which is what I did predict. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. Alabama's offense really has some work to do. Um, like I said, I've been saying this all year. Jalen Hurts, true freshman, he really has to work on developing his passing down the field. And honestly, in order to help him do that, Lane Kiffin just has to call more runs from Bo Scarborough up the middle, zone read, pitch, whatever it is, get Bo Scarborough the ball because we're going to need him against Clemson. And uh, it's going to be interesting. Let me know what you guys think. What did you see in the game? What did you see that I didn't see, or maybe I just didn't mention in the video? Uh, let me know what you think, and see you on the next video.